Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. Right, so, if any of you have watched my last video, you'll know that I was uh, doing a fast. Yeah, I've done three days of fasting, and I'm ready to eat now, like, um, I almost, I'm not gonna lie, I almost gave in yesterday, but I, did, I, I didn't. Um, I had trouble sleeping last night and I couldn't get to sleep. Um, and I woke up, when I did finally get to sleep, I woke up at about 4 o'clock this morning. I'm just like full of, I think it was my metabolism working overtime or something. Um, but the plan is now is to, I was going to do a workout. There's a gym, I was, a little outdoor gym thing over there with the monkey bars and that. I think I'll, I'll do a few sets of pull-ups and that and I'm going to do a couple of uh, sprints on the field. But to be honest, I don't really have that much energy, so uh, I'm just going to go uh, see if I can bag some egg. I'm hoping for a wood pigeon um, to break my fast with, so stay tuned anyway. I'm using, I've, I've got a new frame, but I'm not using my new frame because um, I'm not totally dialed in with it yet. But uh, I'm using my, my homemade frame with the black sniper sling. Uh, 0.7 25-17 taper and I'm shooting 11 mil steel so we'll see how we get on anyway right YouTube to start I'm just gonna uh, do 10 slow press ups probably do two sets Right YouTube, that's me, just doing a very light work out there, and I don't want to overexert myself. So two sets of pull-ups, two uh, sets of slow push-ups as well, and um, I just did a couple of sp a sprint backwards and forwards there as well, so it's a light workout. As I say, I don't want to exert myself too much, I might not be able to pull my bands back properly and that, so. Um, right, I'm on the hunt now. I'm really hungry now, <laughs> uh, but me, I've got me, got me heart set on a pigeon. Like if I can get a pigeon or two, but if I can get a rabbit, that's just as good. Right, so be the perfect protein source as well. Right, anyway, I'll get you back. Got a woody up here, but looks like you might fly. Just tell he was standing out straight as a rabbit.
are dead. He's out. He's out. Nice one. Right, I'm not going hungry anymore. <laughs> Beautiful shot that was. Yeah, I'm gonna go down here and get him. Juice and stuff. Look at that eleven mil steel straight to the brain there. Nice one. Yeah, then bagged up. Right, YouTube. It's been a short mooch, but I got myself a rabbit, and I also just got another one out of this, this bush that was just sitting outside of its burrow. Um, by the time I had the camera on my head on out, so. <laughs> yeah, but it's a fully grown one, but it was it was pretty close range like. Um, so I got two anyway. It's more than enough. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to my little location where I normally go and cook things up. Uh, no one seems to bother you down there, so I'll go down there, get them cooked up. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> right, so I'll catch you in a bit. Feels weird coming here without Charlie. <laughs> He's missing out the day. He's having plenty of fun at school though. Right, so plan is get in here, get a fire on, and uh, cook the rabbit. So I'm well hungry. Right, got the fire started, let's let that burn down a bit and then um, just going to skin these rabbits down here I think. Right YouTube, I'm going to skin these now. There's the one that I didn't have on camera, pretty grown one, don't bet that one. I think we're going to eat this one today, keep him for later. <laughs> right, so... There you go, nice shot there. Straight in the brain. Beautiful shot. A lot of people asking us, um, I'll show you show us skinning the full rabbit, so I'll show you with this. Even though I do show it. But I'll show you the full thing again. Hey Meg. Meg likes the feet. You buy them in uh, pet shops and that, you see them, rabbit feet, they sell them. Meg absolutely loves them. Not much goes to waste. So you start by taking the legs off. Take all the legs off. Just snap the bone. Cut. Dead easy. Then take the head off. You want to do this on the ground or on a bit of wood or something. Try not to blunt your knife in the process. 
Right. And you just go in through the skin. Not into the belly though, you don't go right into the innards, right? You just go under the skin with a knife. Get your fingers under and start pulling back. Dead easy. There's one bit. There you go. Yep, and what you do is you got it. I like to go through the rib cage so I don't nick any of the guts. Carefully slice up without hitting any of them intestines or guts. Because that is messy. And you don't want that, you don't want to contaminate your food. The guts will just fall out like that. Finish it off, go all the way to the tail end. And then what you do with the tail is you just slice, make a V-notch down the side of the tail. Like that, on that side. On that side. And you pull. There's a two sack, and then you just go for the guts. Right, so I've left the liver in there, Meg can have the liver, I'll cook the Meg. I'll cook the liver up for Meg. Just fussy, she doesn't like it raw. And I'll just get rid of the lungs as well. Cook the heart for her as well. Right, so we've got the kidney and the liver in there still and the heart. And there you have it. I'll give it a little rinse out in the water. It's starting to rain now. It was forecast to rain this afternoon, but hopefully it's just a quick shower. So, hi, we're gonna get that up. Um, I've got some butter and some jerk seasoning just to give it a bit of flavour and a bit more added fat. So I'm looking forward to eating this. <laughs> right, I'm gonna skin that other one. I'll not bother showing you that one though. There we go. I'm just waiting for that to die doing some more. Now I've got the trusty grill, I'm just going to put it on there. I was going to spit it over the fire, but I can't really find the sticks to do that, so never mind. The grill will do. I just wanted to show you my new, my new catty. Uh, Leeton Spitfire. Um, it's a nice frame, but I, I've actually made a mistake when I've ordered it. Um, I ordered the 90 mil frame, and then when I got it, I realised that it's 95 mils. I, I'm used to shooting 90, 95 mil between the forks, um, and you wouldn't really think that little five mil would make any difference, but I've noticed it really does. Like maybe it's just me getting used to the frame as well, but I'm just not accurate. I'm not hitting what. I am, I am, but it's not consistent, you know, it's like dotted all that, so I'm, I'm blaming it on the, um, the five mil between the forks. And it's probably, it's probably getting used to the, the new, the new kind of grip as well, because it is, 
different, a little bit different to the way I usually hold it. But it's, it is a nice frame. Um, got this up for eBay, it was only £21. Um, aye, nice, nice frame, nice thickness to it. And the new bands as well. Uh, I'm not sure if I like them as much as I like my GZK like, but um, and pe people, when I mentioned that on my last video, people said uh, that uh, the black sniper thing doesn't like to be overly stretched, it doesn't like to be maxed out, um, and I did find out you bang on, because the first set of bands I made, uh, I made them like 5 mil longer, and the first first pullback, when they flung back, it, it snapped, yeah? And I was like, oh, so... I made them uh, every 12 mil extra length, um, and they seem to be all right. But I'm still getting used to them, like. But you know, it was a good, good test for them today, like. I got two bunnies, <laughs> so they mustn't be, they mustn't be too bad. Um, but I, that was on the usual frame. This frame, I'll need to get a little bit more used to it, I think. But another one out of the collection I suppose I've only got a few bought ones I've got about three boats that I bought for myself um, I've got three about three that I bought myself and uh, I just I prefer to make them to be honest I made that one and that's that's the one I've been using for the longest uh, I'm more accurate with it as well just what you get used to, I suppose. Um, but I thought I'd show you that anyway. Right, this fire's gonna get die down now, so I'm gonna put my rabbit on. What I brought uh, for a bit extra flavour on that. Got this little clay pot. I'm just gonna melt some lure pack in there by the fire, and I've got some uh, this jerk seasoning. Just to give it a little added flavour, but I'm I'm hungry new like I want I want food. Right, can we get the rabbit on? Right. Put these livers on for Meg as well. And keep it happy. Hopefully they don't fall through. What's up, mate? It's a liver from the bigger rabbit as well there. Eh? You're probably wondering why I didn't cook the bigger rabbit, but I just think it would be too tough for this. To cook him in the slow cooker. Probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, that's a nice size anyway, just to break my fast with. And I'll be going home and probably having a nice steak later, so... You know... These little kidneys, I'm just going to put them on this stone because they're just going to fall through. Heart and kidney. There we go, and Meg's getting fed as well. Just gonna add some of the seasoning to the butter as well. And Meg waiting patiently for our scran. Right, it's a rabbit just cooking away there, just roasting away out of the fire. So, I wanted to just uh, talk a little bit about my fasting experience. <laughs> um, in case anyone's interested out there. So, I started on Tuesday at 11 o'clock um, today's Friday there's a rain again I think um, 
and you know I was sitting out to do a three day fast. I've done fasting before in the past um, for weight loss and for health benefits and that. That's, you're probably wondering why I would want to do this but that's mainly the reason why I did it. I, do, I like to do at least a two day fast um, every couple of months. You know I just do a little two day fast and it clears all the crap out of your body. Um, gives you a chance to work on it, gives your body a chance to work on itself. Um, you get this autophagy activation basically where it just goes in and kills all the all the dead and dying cells and stuff like that, gets rid of them all. Um, any cells that aren't meant to be there, cancerous cells out there, it just demolishes them, you know. The longer you fast, the better, better it is really. Um, but I just wanted to mention this for if there's anyone out there watching that's got cancer or who's who knows someone with cancer um, t tell them to look into fasting uh, like don't take my advice for it but look into it and um, fasting but not only fasting but zero carb diets people do it all the time the wipe the wipe cancer clean out without any you know what the what the medical system uh, giving you you know the treatments that they give you and that it's all completely unnecessary, but it makes trillions, you know I mean? It's worth trillions, so that's why they're keeping it going. Whereas fasting doesn't make any money at all. Now they just told you, oh, just fast and uh, eat low-carb diet. They told you, everyone in the world could be healthy as anything, you know, if they told you the right, the right science, but they just tell you all the crap science and um, a lot of the studies and all that, you know, are all funded by the big businesses, Kellogg's and Nestle and bloody all them, you know what I mean? Coca-Cola, they, they fund the studies, so it has to go in their favour, you know? So it's just, this, like wheat and all this stuff is good for your heart and that, and it's, it's absolutely not. It's actually really bad for you. But, I didn't want to waffle on, I'm not trying to project my views on anyone here, each their own, but, um, you know, it really interests me this, and I thought like, I feel I've got loads of knowledge on it, to be honest. Um, but I've tried, like, I, I, I've personally got someone in my family with cancer and they didn't listen to us, you know what I mean? Because they won't, because they think you, you don't know what you're talking about, you're not a doctor, you know what I mean? But what they what they don't understand is that it's a business. The medical, <laughs> the medical system is one big, massive business. You know, doctors have quotas to hit. Um, dishing out meds and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They've got, they're just drug dealers, really. Um, and you know, giving out treatment that's unnecessary and that. And for general health, it shouldn't be a thing. Obviously, hospitals, doctors, nurses, and all are all needed. Of course, are needed. You know, if you're in, in an accident or something like that, you need to be fixed and you know, medical attention. But there's a lot of things that don't. Uh, like type 2 diabetes and that, it's just one big scam man, one big scam, um, but you know, it does, it does upset us because people don't listen to you, you know, and they, they think oh, I'd rather listen to the experts, but they're only experts in their field, which is dishing out meds and dishing out treatment that's unnecessary, you know, because there's no money in telling you to do it yourself through fasting, so anyway, ran over, didn't mean to go on there, Hope it wasn't too much for eight years, but I'm not trying to, as I say, I'm not trying to uh, push my views on anyone here. I'm just, no, I just find it quite upsetting how people are suffering and dying with these diseases. And it's all known about, but they're just, it's all about making money, you know. It's big business at the end of the day. And what's bad for business is healthy people, you know what I mean? So they want everyone sick and how they get people sick is to feed them all the bad, all the wrong information. Oh, eat this, it's good for you. No, it's not. <laughs> Be a vegan is good for you. Oh, I'll, I'll say it, like, I watch a lot of stuff on diets and that, and um, so many vegans say it was the worst thing I've ever done to myself. I totally destroyed my health, you know? And then I add animal products back in and they, they feel good again. So anyway, that was quite a mouthful. I'm sorry it gone on. Hopefully I didn't burn anyone's lugs out with that. Um, but you never know. Me saying that could could have helped someone out there, so that's all. I, that's that's all I'm going to say on that. Right, I'm going to turn this rabbit again.
Leave the kidneys a little bit longer for that. Shouldn't chew these up now. Isn't that nice, Maggie. Yeah. Aye, never had kidneys in the house, wouldn't Oh. Oh. There's like some fat coming out of it as well. Looks tasty, that rabbit leg. I think it's almost there, like. Right. This is my plate. Done. Nice toast that he is. Oh, smells nice. So I've just added some more um, the seasoning to that butter. This meat, juicy though. Like. Ooh, oh aye. You'd think rabbit would dry out over the fire. You know what? It's got like loads of moisture in it. Because it's the outside of the rabbit kinda it gets like harder harder and tighter and it it seals it all in. Right. Oh, that was so good, man. Mmm. Perfect meal. Perfect protein sauce. So much nutrition in wild game, mate. Like. Because it's it's wild. It eats off the land, and it's, it doesn't have anything unnatural. It's not living unnaturally, like a lot of farm stuff is. Perfectly. Now, that was a funny thing as well before. You know, after I did a little bit of. I didn't overly like uh, knock on myself out like when I did a little few push ups and a few pull ups and that. Um, but when I got that, like I felt like quite like fatigued and low in energy and all that, and I was a bit like unsure of myself. And as soon as I got that rabbit, I was like, yes! <laughs> it really boosted my morale, you know? Because I thought, right, there's food. And when you think about it, that's like the natural dopamine release. You know, of why dopamine is a natural thing. Like, in the past, when you hunted something, you get a hit dopamine. Because it makes you feel good, so it, it makes you do it more, you know what I mean? And you go back and feed your tribe and all that with it, so... Now everyone just gets a lot of cheap dopamine off their phones and social media and that. And it doesn't make them want to do, like, normal things.
this is really nice like not just see it's not just because I've not just because I've had any food for three days it's actually really nice in a batch drop. Like that's the out, the out, even though I've skinned it, it's when you heat it over the fire, it has like an it's like tightens up and has makes like an extra skin on it, it seals all the moisture in. I'm gonna finish this up anyway. Pretty much stripped that carcass out. That was uh, very nice. Look at Meg. Look at Meg. Come on, see if you can strip out off there. Right, YouTube. That's just me walking out now. Uh, put the fire out and all that and uh, finish that rabbit off. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, just for adding a bit of simple flavour to things like. And have you cooking wild game over the campfire and stuff like that just melt a little bit of butter in the dish and add some of that whatever kind of seasoning you want to it and just use it to dip in really nice um gives a good flavor and the moisture as well of the butter not that that rabbit needed it like it was it was very moist inside um i've never really i've never cooked a rabbit like that before so first time for me but nice um I so anyway this is the end of the video now so if you liked it you know what to do and uh hope you enjoyed I've really enjoyed making this one um so I'll see you on the next one cheers thanks take care